Donald Rumsfeld remains a free man tonight despite an unsuccessful attempt to arrest him in Boston. In our third story on the countdown, the try for a citizen's arrest came from a group called Veterans for Peace. They confronted the former Bush, uh, President Bush's Secretary of Defense at a book signing on Monday night. I'm making a citizen's I went down front and looked Donald Rumsfeld in the eye and said, I'm making a citizen's arrest. The man speaking there was Nate Goldschlag, who will join us shortly. He was part of a larger group that gathered at the Old South Meeting House, the site that sparked the actual Tea Party in 1773. Rumsfeld was there to discuss known and unknown, a memoir, a memoir, which uh, New York Times Review called a fast and loose game of dodgeball, tedious and self-serving, filled with efforts to blame others. Despite Rumsfeld's efforts to rewrite history, the facts still blame him and others in the Bush administration for the ongoing carnage that followed the invasion of Iraq. Some of Rumsfeld's supporters disagreed with the protesters. I fought for this country. Yes! And that man is a war yes! Yes! Mr. Goldschlag was one of several removed from the protest, co-sponsored by Code Pink. One man was reportedly arrested for using a bullhorn to assault a police officer. About 300 supporters of Rumsfeld were inside, while well, the protesters stayed mostly outside. One wore a mask and a costume suggesting new attire for the man his pals call Rummy. And now, as promised, let's bring in Nate Goldschlag, who served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam era and is now a board member of Veterans for Peace. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Thank you for having me, Keith. All right, so the old uh, dog uh, catches, or dog follows car, chases car, catches car. What would you have done with Mr. Rumsfeld if you had success, succeeded in arresting him? Well, obviously for a citizen's arrest, the Boston police have to come in and mm -hmm. actually make the arrest. And they, were, they, were, they had nothing to do with that. They, in fact, they hustled me out. Uh, the, the, the use of the term war criminal, it, it's, it's strong and weighted language. Give me your rationale for using it. Okay, we believe that Donald Rumsfeld is, is basically one of the people responsible for the Iraq war. He lied about weapons of mass destruction. He lied about Saddam's links to 9-11. He lied about yellow cake from Niger. He lied about mobile weapons. That was the whole thing. A and, and he got us into, into war, a war that has killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, 5,000 Americans. So we view him as a war criminal. Uh, well, you put it that way, it sounds like it was uh, a pretty convincing argument, and yet uh, the protesters seemed outnumbered by the Rumsfeld supporters. Uh, were you nervous? Did, how, were you, how were you treated on the whole, do you think? Well, once I got up, they started shouting, shouting at me to get out of there, and, you know, as people were, as we were hustled out, they were yelling, goodbye, goodbye, that kind of thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, there were 300 people that were, that were gotten by right-wing talk radio in Boston, and uh, it, w it was to what we expected. Was it instructive at all to, to be among people who think he's some sort of hero as opposed to uh, the very bad, very ill-prepared and possibly criminal Secretary of Defense under George Bush? Uh, and it was an instructive. No, no I, thought it was, I thought it was a little bit comical and, and, and discouraging that people can actually think that. I think one of the people on the news report said he's one of the finest Americans in history. So I, I just don't understand how people can think that. I don't think these people are representative of most people in the United States. But, but, but did you see any, well, I guess what I'm saying is, did you see any sign of thinking? Because it, it occurs to me that thinking has got nothing to do with it. These are people who probably had undiagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder after 9-11 or just people who get their rocks off watching us invade uh, countries and, and kill people who don't deserve either. Uh, it, did you see any sign that there was actual somebody who, who could have presented some sort of intellectual argument against what you were saying? No, not really. I mean, the guy in, in front of me in line, I was not dressed like this with mm -hmm. this Veterans for Peace t-shirt. I had on, you know, good clothes and, and it was kind of incognito. And this guy in front of me was yelling at protesters, go back to Cuba, you know, go back to Cuba. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's comical. I mean, I, these people, you know, these people really are a little bit out there. Uh, uh, too much listening to a local right-wing radio in Boston, which is particularly laughable, like the, uh, the what's that, uh, Callahan and Dennis, the, the old sports writers. Uh, you had to pay 50 bucks to get in. Did you get your, auto your book autographed, at least? I couldn't stomach taking his book. <laughs> um, he, <laughs> the book. The book was on the table. You could have taken one, but, uh, you know, as it was, I was forced to give him standing ovations and stuff before I stood up. But, um, you know, I, I didn't take his book. Uh, but well, I'll tell you, Keith, yeah. we're going to be we're going to be down in D.C. next week, October 6th, 
occupying Freedom Plaza, Veterans for Peace, along with many other groups. Okay. And we want you there. We know you've covered the, the, uh, the occupation of Wall Street, and we, we appreciate what you're doing. We want you to come there. Which date have you picked? October 6th, right. Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C. We're beginning an occupation. All right, let me see if we can work it out logistically. I doubt it, but, but let me see. It would be a logistical question and nothing else. Uh, Nate Goldschlag, a proud American veteran after his attempt to conduct a citizen's arrest on former Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld. Uh, and great thanks for some of your time tonight, sir. All right, thanks, Keith.